First and foremost, do your own research. For years, I've researched the occult of the global elite. The content in this presentation is not to convince you of anything. On the contrary, the information is provided in the hope that the viewer will expand thought and instigate independent research. To embrace the notion that through the channels of information, via education, media, politics, and religion, that the global elite have guided society for the continued accumulation of power. It's stranger than fiction. The rabbit hole is endless. But at the end of the day, all I'm looking for is a little critical thinking for my fellow patriotic countrymen to pay heed to the realization of internal influences of manipulation. Welcome to Fine Muck. The Rockefellers were instrumental in the construction of the World Trade Center towers. At its dedication, they referred to the Twin Towers as a marriage between utility and beauty. This was a direct reference to the Twin Pillars upon the entrance of Solomon's Temple, Boaz and Jochen representing the duality of opposites. Our story starts with the Pillars of Boaz and Jochen. Seemingly insignificant, the Twin Pillars that adorn the front porch of Solomon's Temple are of great importance to the esoteric arena. Mentioned in Kings and Chronicles, the pillars are described as Jachin being on the right and Boaz being on the left. Solomon's temple is at the forefront of symbolism in Freemasonry. Some of the things that are prevalent in the symbolism are the checkered floor, tools of the trade like the trowel, plum, compass and square, and the twin pillars of Solomon's temple, Boaz and Jachin. Recognized on the local level, the ties to the organization reach all the way to the most powerful men in the world. In Freemasonry, the initiate uses a learning tool called a tracing board for perspective and procedure. It is an illustration to help the initiate learn the tools of the trade. Much like a Boy Scout earns badges, the Freemason initiate escalates through the ranks by achievement of knowledge and ritual. In actuality, the Boy Scout's structure of merit derived from Freemasonry. We can see the icons of the trowel, the plum, the compass, and the square. Important to note, we see the sun on one side and the moon on the other, representing the duality of opposites. Also the checkered floor depicting the duality of opposites like yin and yang. The border shows directional symbols from the compass rose, indicating magnetic polar opposites. The all-seeing eye directly east represents the eastern star Sirius. There are seven stars representing the seven levels of heaven or chakras and the latter represents Jacob's ladder from the Bible. The three angels on Jacob's ladder represent the three initial degrees of the order. There are three initial degrees of Freemasonry and a tracing board pertaining to each degree. The first degree is the apprentice and the tracing board that accompanies this degree is the image of three pillars, the sun, the moon, along with the all-seeing eye representing the eastern star Sirius. The second degree is called the fellowcraft, and it is accompanied by a tracing board representing Solomon's temple. A ladder winds up to the escalated room, Holy of the Holies. The third is a coffin with the head facing west. Essentially, it is turned upside down from the apprentice tracing board. It is adorned with the number 555, believed to represent death. Thus, the initiate is reborn and emerges as an enlightened master mason. Symbolically, the premise of the duality of opposites is the equalization of extremes when combined together to create ascension. North and south, black and white, night and day, good and evil, or man and woman are just a few examples. The opposites can be up and down as with the Star of David. You see one triangle pointing up combined with one pointing down completing the marriage. Caduceus is the medical symbol for which we are all familiar. Two snakes 
wrapping around a staff to a winged sun disk. The dual snakes represent the kundalini, an ancient symbol of serpent power through meditation. Some might be familiar with the kundalini from the practice of yoga. An envisioned snake winds itself through seven energy points called chakras. From the bottom, or the root chakra, energy escalates to the third eye chakra and then the crown chakra representing spiritual ascension. If you were to look at Caduceus from an aerial view, from top dead center, you will see the duality of opposites swirling around each other. Yin and yang is the image of opposites of black and white with dots that represent the snake eyes, swirling, creating spiritual oneness. Dual opposites of yin and yang are the same concept as Boaz and Jachin. The image of man and woman at the altar, dual opposites, further depicted by the traditional black and white dress. Imagery personified as we go back to Solomon's temple, easily debated, Solomon's temple is a depiction of the sex act, with the holy of the holies representing the moment of conception. Man and woman, duality of opposites creating life. The body is the temple. Man and woman coming together. As we reflect upon the imagery of Adam and Eve, we see the tree of life with a snake. Man and woman represent the duality of opposites completing the repeated theme of Caduceus. Day and night as opposites are represented by the Egyptian gods Horus and Seth. In ancient Egypt mythology, Horus is in the form of a bird which was the sun god, while Seth was the ruler of night and was represented as a dog-like creature. We see them churning a mill, the duality of opposites contributing to the equalization of extremes. In an ancient statue, you see Horus and Seth divided by Osiris. Osiris was the father of Horus and the brother of Seth. If we were to compare it to a Freemason tracing board, Osiris would be pointed east, and thus we get the connection of Osiris representing the eastern star Sirius. Take special note how Horus and Seth have their arms erected to represent Osiris as a pyramid. Once again, let's consider Caduceus and the Kundalini, literally meaning coiled. Envisioned, as either a goddess or a sleeping serpent coiled at the base of the spine, hence serpent power. This is why we see pharaohs with a snake protruding from their forehead, representing the ascension of the kundalini. We can reflect upon Adam and Eve, duality of opposites, with a snake winding up the tree of life. This imagery can be traced all the way back to Samaria. The same concept of the duality of opposites with a snake representing the ascension by the way of the tree of life. From Sumeria to ancient Egypt, from the Bible to Freemasonic Kabbalah, it's all the same concept of the duality of opposites and the ascension by the way of the tree of life. The tree of life is a structure of enlightenment in the practice of Kabbalah, an ancient Jewish mysticism religion that dates back to the time of Eden. Within the structure, there are ten circles called sephirots, consisting of a column on the left representing strength and on the right representing mercy. Each level is indicated by seven chakras. When the opposites of these outside columns or pillars combine, they are symbolized as ascension by the middle pillar of enlightenment. In the Kabbalah Tree of Life, there are ten sephirots and 32 paths that connect them together. In Freemasonry, there are two rites, or two sects of the order, the York Rite and the Scottish Rite. Ironically, the York Rite has 10 degrees of achievement, and the Scottish Rite has 32. Quite simply, the teachings of Freemasonry are derived from Kabbalah. This is very important. In essence, the levels of achievement or degrees are accomplished by escalating the initiate to a higher awareness or an illumination, thus being illuminated, a thousand points of light. A Freemasonic apron illustrating the eastern star as the all-seeing eye. Duality of opposites, combined in the middle, 
ascending to the eastern star Sirius represented as a pyramid, an eye, or a geometrical shape. Over and over, the same imagery is depicted in our everyday lives and with little notice. With a few exceptions, most houses of worship share the same design. This tracing board has the same design as a very famous building. You can see the similarities with the Taj Mahal. Cathedrals have the same design. Boas and Jachin and the Ascension in the middle. Mormon temples, same design. Here we see a mosque with the same design. The word mall derives from the word mill, as seen here with Horace and Seth churning a mill. This metaphoric imagery is within the Washington, D.C. Mall. The Washington Mall represents the tree of life and the chakra system. The Capitol represents the bottom chakra, and the Washington Monument represents the ascension of the crown chakra. From the Capitol, moving west, there are two columns of buildings representing Boas and Jachin, or the polar opposites of magnetic north and south. The Washington Monument obelisk completes this metaphoric image with an apex pyramid on top. The Washington Monument represents the middle pillar or Jacob's Ladder in the Freemasonic tradition. In Kabbalah, it is the hidden sephirot called Dat, spelled D-A-A-T, that holds the same meaning. Here it is illustrated as mystery, the ascension of the third pillar. Malls, also referred to as stargates, are landscape formations that share the same general representation as the tree of life, consisting of a root or bottom chakra, two sides that represent boas and jachin, and an obelisk of some sort representing the crown or top chakra. Here is the mall in Paris with the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower, as with the Washington Monument, represents the third pillar of ascension. King's Tower Amusement Park in Ohio has a replica of the Eiffel Tower. From the tower, looking down, you can see the six chakras leading to the tower representing the seventh. It's flanked by hedges that represent boas and jachin. All malls carry the same basic structure. The Louvre Museum in Paris is home to the Place de la Concorde Mall. The obelisk that represents the third pillar was extracted from the Luxor Temple in Egypt and shares the same general design. The body is the temple. The obelisk is prevalent. The Vatican tries to hide the meaning of the Egyptian obelisk in the center of St. Peter's Square by placing a cross on top of it, and you can see on either side the fountains representing Boas and Jachin. Here is the Centennial Mall in Tennessee. There are Stargate Malls all over the world. Freemasonic Kabbalah is an ancient mysticism religion practiced by the world elite. One Stargate Mall to pay special attention to might be the Israel Supreme Court. It is full of Zionist Freemasonic Kabbalah symbolism. From the top of the illustration, you will see what represents the bottom chakra and moves to the left through a court that separates the buildings to symbolize the duality of opposites of Boaz and Jachin, and then continues to the pyramid with the all-seeing eye on top. Also known as the Eye of Ra, the Eye of Horus, or the Eye of Providence, it is no coincidence that the Israel Supreme Court shares the same iconic symbolism as the Federal Reserve. All around the campus you will see the hallmarks of the Freemasonic Kabbalah, the pyramid with the all-seeing eye, an obelisk, and on the street you will see a roundabout with a pyramid, boas and jachin, and a compass and square on top. When one is familiar with the secret, the hallmarks of the code stick out like a beacon in the night. In my own backyard, in Washington State, it is obvious that the Tulalip Casino outside of Marysville, has a mall representing the Freemasonic Kabbalah Tree of Life. Compare it to the Louvre Stargate in Paris, and you will see the distinctive similarities. At the bottom, the traffic circle roundabout represents the bottom chakra and continues up through the mill to the center of the octagon. 
you see the octagon on both stargates. Connect the corners and it represents the two-dimensional aerial view of the tetrahedron. The phallus represents Solomon's temple and the duality of man and woman creating life. The body is the temple. The center represents the conception or the holy of the holies. As you enter the casino, you will see pillars representing Boaz and Jochen with a swirling statue in the middle directly under the pyramid on top of the building. Thus, representing Jacob's ladder, the third pillar, and the ascension to the eastern star Sirius. In the lobby of the Casino Hotel, you will see a full-blown tracing board behind the reception desk. It is one gigantic eye, with the sun on one side representing Horus, and the moon on the other representing Seth. The three well fins represent the three initial degrees of Freemasonry, the apprentice, the fellow craft, and the master mason. The diamond shape represents the compass and square, and it is equally divided, as above, so below. It is the same image as the first degree tracing board. As you walk into the hotel lobby, you will see the three story poles at different levels representing the apprentice, the fellow craft, and the master mason. At the Seven Cedars Casino in Squim, Washington, the trained eye will recognize the symbolism by the tracing board formation of the story poles in front, seven cedars or seven chakras. In the circular bar, very much like the one at the Tulalip Tribal Casino, they have brass markers in the floor flanked on both sides of the bar representing Boas and Jockin. They have imprints of Native American art, and as for the placement of the markers, I see no other reason for this arrangement other than the representation of Boas and Jockin. If you were to look at the bar of Seven Cedars from an aerial view, it would be no different than the Place de la Concorde Mall with fountains representing Boas and Jockin. It's the same imagery as St. Peter's Square, with the middle obelisk representing Jacob's Ladder or the ascension to the Eastern Star. Washington State has a history with the influence of the Freemasonic Code. The mall at the 1909 World's Fair is now part of the campus at the University of Washington. The phallus-shaped mall escalates to the obelisk at the top with another reference to Solomon's Temple. On the compass rose, it faced southeast, which might cause some confusion, but it appears to be lined up with Mount Rainier. The Smith Tower in Seattle was the tallest building west of the Mississippi. Construction started a year after the 1909 World's Fair. Steeped in Freemasonic symbolism, the Smith Tower has a 13-floor obelisk complete with apex pyramid emulating the Washington Monument and the 13-tiered pyramid on the dollar bill. Add 20 stories below the obelisk and you have a 33-story building representing the top 33rd degree of the order. Proof was needed to confirm suspicions. Research uncovered Layman C. Smith's obituary. The last sentence of the obituary reveals the connection. Quote, he was a Chevalier Légion d'Honneur of France a 32nd degree Mason, and a Knight Templar. Ironic that the Knights Templar have been thought to be out of commission long ago. The connection is that both Layman C. Smith and George Washington were high-ranking Freemasons and both had obelisks erected in their honor. Here we see Washington in a tracing board illustration from a textbook from the turn of the 20th century. Notice the checkered floor and the pentagram over his head representing the eastern star Sirius. The stairs represent escalation to the Holy of the Holies of Solomon's Temple. On his apron, the compass and square with an all-seeing eye. On the left column, you will see an illustration of Jacob's Ladder. Washington, D.C. is completely steeped in the occult of the Freemasonic Kabbalah. Freemasonic buildings, statues, and most cryptic street designs reveal a portion of history you will not find in American textbooks. 
one must ponder the vast extent of the occult entity and realize how much information is yet to be revealed. As mentioned before, if you look at the compass rose from the first degree tracing board, you will see that the top of the illustration is facing east towards the eastern star Sirius. The third degree tracing board is an illustration of a coffin and the compass rose is rotated 180 degrees. Thus, the bottom of the coffin is pointed towards the east and therefore the direction of Sirius. The Washington Mall is the tree of life and also a depiction of the third degree tracing board coffin. The root chakra is the capital due east. The White House is on the border on the north and the Jefferson Memorial is on the border to the south. The Lincoln Memorial is on the west border but facing east and in the center is the Washington Monument. As we reflect upon the previous examples of the Tree of Life and Stargates, you can see the third degree coffin emerge. With closer inspection, you'll recognize some familiar icons from the first degree, like the directional rose, compass and square, and the checkered floor. One thing to take note of is the number 555 encoded on the coffin. Some believe that the five represents death. The Washington Monument measures 555 feet by no small coincidence. The Washington Mall is a gigantic Freemasonic tracing board. Looking east is the first degree and looking west is the third degree. At the bottom of the Washington Mall is the capital representing the root chakra. At the top of this symbolic coffin is the Lincoln Memorial. Inside of the memorial is a statue of Abe as he sits at his throne. Underneath his armrest, you will see the pillars of Boaz and Jochen, symbolic of the duality of opposites with the red Republicans on the right and the blue Democrats on the left. It depicts the tracing board with the president at the apex of the podium, complete with Boaz and Jochen on either side. The symbolism runs deep. Washington is the District of Columbia, the importance of the name Columbia might turn up a few theories. Columba being a star constellation separated from the Canis Major constellation in the 17th century or maybe a tribute to Christopher Columbus. Columbia is significant to the global elite. Much like Uncle Sam derives from the acronym U.S., the female mascot for the United States is Columbia. Columbia Pictures uses the image complete with the eternal flame used by the Statue of Liberty. The eternal flame is also used as an icon of the order. The Columbia Broadcast System uses the all-seeing eye as their logo. Columbia College and Columbia International University uses the twin towers of Boas and Jochen and their logos. Columbia Sportswear uses the sun symbol that carries the same iconic meaning as the swastika. Sun Microsystem uses the sun symbol for their logo. The Rockefeller Empire uses the same logo as the sun symbol for the Chase Manhattan Bank. The outline is in the shape of an octagon that has also been identified at the top of Stargate Malls. Columbia Space Shuttle uses the same octagon along with the Awin Pyramid. At the top, you will see the Eastern Star taking the same symbolic placement as the all-seeing eye of the dollar bill. Columbia Pictures holding up the eternal light of illumination as with the Statue of Liberty. Washington is the District of Columbia. Columbia is the harlot of Babylon. Stargate malls are not the only design within the streets of Washington, D.C. Much like the Fibonacci score, sacred geometry is a form of geometry that metaphorically symbolizes the universe and its immense properties of space and time. The flower of life represents the ascension of the eastern star as we see it in the steeple of this cathedral in San Francisco resting between the pillars of Boaz and Jochen. The Flower of Life is a significant design in the concept of sacred geometry. Here we see a drawing of the Flower of Life by da Vinci. The group of seven circles is the inner skeletal design for Metatron's cube. 
Within each circle, you can see a design that emerges from the vesica pisces. It is the football shape that is created when two circles connect in the center by the radius of the encroaching circle. Metatron's cube is a circle surrounded by six circles, and from those circles, six more are added. Connect all circles with a line from the center of each circle, a cube emerges. But also, you see the tetrahedron, a three-dimensional design of the Star of David, 12 circles surrounding the 13th circle. The Flower of Life metaphorically represents infinity inward and outward, the Alpha and the Omega. Da Vinci's Last Supper is symbolic of Metatron's cube. Jesus sits in the center as the 13th person at a table with his 12 disciples on either side of him. Additionally, the Last Supper is one-point projection art. Jesus has his hands folded and is in the shape of a pyramid and sits directly in front of the center window representing the ascension, while the windows on either side of him represent Boaz and Jochen. The Freemasons that designed the streets of Washington, D.C. incorporated many designs of sacred geometry. The White House is located in the center of the 13th circle. Within the geometry of the streets, you will find the Great Pyramid. The tomb is in the center of Metatron's cube. One of the most significant designs in the streets of Washington, D.C. is the Capitol Owl. The owl is a prevalent icon of the Freemasonic Rite. The Federal Reserve was clever enough to hide their mascot in the $1 bill. Here is a Freemasonic tracing board with an owl holding the eternal flame. On one side you have royalty and on the other is religion. This shows Ishtar with the wings of Caduceus and owls on either side of her. The Capitol has the Senate on one side and the House on the other. In the middle, the Capitol Dome. The Capitol sits in the belly of the owl. The owl represents Moloch, the Canaanite horned deity of the ancient Babylonian mystery religion. Moloch is the horned beast of sacrifice. It's where we get the term, the belly of the beast. Moloch can be seen in illustrations depicting the deity as a horned beast at the altar of sacrifice. The capital L is a Freemasonic symbol and it represents Moloch. Take note that the capital is in the belly of the beast. The Bohemian Grove is a summer retreat for the world's most elite players in world politics to practice the occult rituals of the Freemasonic Order. Each July, world leaders in finance, media, and politics gather at the Bohemian Grove and have a ceremony called the Cremation of Care. The Cremation of Care is a mock human sacrifice where they burn an effigy in front of a gigantic statue of an owl, thus depicting the sacrifice in the belly of the beast. The owl represents Moloch. The Bohemian Grove has a long history. Here we see Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan listening to a lecture by Harvey Hancock. The Manhattan Project that produced the atom bomb was initiated at the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Society and the Grove are rarely mentioned in mainstream media. On the occasion that a story is printed, it is usually dismissive or portrayed negatively. The highest echelon of the world elite attend the Bohemian Grove. Here we see George Herbert Walker and his son W. given a speech as prestigious members. The Bush family has deep connections with the esoteric societies, including three generations at Yale University's Skull and Bones. George W., George H. W., and his father, Prescott Bush, were all members of the Skull and Bones fraternity. As with the third degree of the Freemasonic order, Skull and Bones has a similar ceremonial ritual where the initiate enacts a mock death only to be resurrected as an enlightened person. Skull and Bones uses the same iconic symbol as the third-degree Freemason and the Nazi Order of Death. 
The connection of the Bush family to the Nazis is more than coincidental. Prescott Bush was directly associated with Union Bank when funds were seized under the Trading with the Enemy Act. One might put it into perspective when it is considered that the son of a Nazi traitor becomes the head of the CIA, then vice president, and then president. On September 11, 1991, exactly 10 years before the attacks on the World Trade Center, George H.W. Bush announced the coming of the New World Order, a one-world government ruled by a network of information and surveillance. The allegiance is strong. Incubated from the financial maneuvering of the Rothschilds family, control has been established through an exclusive network of banks, the Federal Reserve, think tanks, and nonprofit foundations linking the United States, United Kingdom, and Israel under the guise of organizations like the Council of Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, and the United Nations. Power is centralized through corporations. The global elite dictate every aspect of our lives through the educational system, politics, media, and the things that we buy. Social security numbers, as we see here nestled in between the pillars of Boas and Jochen, have become nothing more than a serial number. To the controllers, we are chattel. The Federal Reserve is run by a collection of banks heavily connected to the Rothschild and Rockefeller dynasties and have systematically devalued our notes to currency through fractional banking and a process of issuing fiat money. As Americans, we are born into bondage with a debt of over $13,000 per each person in the United States. Take special note of the facade of the Federal Reserve Building, Boas and Jochen, and the ascension in the middle, with an eagle on top representing Caduceus. Media is condensed into a handful of companies that share the same source of information. The hallmarks of their control are apparent through icons that they use, hidden if you do not know what you are looking for, the all-seeing eye within the pyramid. CBS uses the all-seeing eye as their logo. Here we have Warner Brothers. The power of the pyramid is not just with media. When you know the code, the icons of the Illuminati are strikingly apparent. One might marvel at the grip that they have on our everyday lives through government agencies. Here is an IRS building, complete with Boas and Jochen and the ascension of the pyramid. The icons are apparent through organizations like AA and Al-Anon. The Freemasonic Code is evident. Twelve steps, the thirteenth is the power of the pyramid. Events like the Olympics, apex pyramids. Also, take note of the Beatles' yellow submarine. Concerts. Performers. Album covers with tracing boards. Album covers with pyramids. The examples are vast. A whole presentation could be developed to show the subliminal icons that are incorporated into our everyday lives. The different kind of icons are plentiful, but the biggest conduit of recognition is the pyramid and the all-seeing eye, as we see here with Madonna. One of the symbols is the OK sign. It could be easily disputed, but in actuality, it depicts 666. The Beatles were saturated with Illuminati symbolism. Paul is displaying the 666 hand sign, while John is displaying the Moloch sign long before its popularity of the metal years in the 80s. And Michael Jackson was just a puppet. The biggest recording artists are indoctrinated into the cabal of the Illuminati. All one has to do is recognize the symbolism. One eye is covered to symbolize the all-seeing eye. It's more than coincidence. This has been going on for a long time. A very long time. Michael Jackson appeared to be at the pinnacle of subliminal messages conveyed by his handlers. The dangerous album cover is a tracing board and is quite possibly the most elaborate example of the occult practiced by the Freemasonic Kabbalah Zionists. 
we go back to the illustration of George Washington featured in a Freemasonic tracing board from around the turn of the 20th century. The classic symbols are present, namely the star above the arch, representing the eastern star Sirius. On his apron you see the all-seeing eye, along with a compass and square. He is holding a trowel and standing on a checkered floor. On the left, or north pillar, you can even see an illustration of Jacob's Ladder. The stairs behind him represent the path to the Holy of the Holies. Not only is the dangerous album cover a Freemasonic tracing board, but you can also see the outline of the Bohemian Owl with belly exposed. The Belly of the Beast of Moloch In the belly of the owl, you will see the world flipped upside down representing the root chakra of the Kabbalah Tree of Life. The Skeletal Framework of the Freemasonic Tracing Board On top of the pillars of Boaz and Jachin, you see illustrations of a bird representing Horus and a dog that represents Seth, thus being the duality of opposites, night and day. Further up, you will see globes that represent the sephirots of the Kabbalah Tree of Life. Here we see Horus as a bird and Seth as a dog in between Osiris in this ancient Egyptian artifact. And, as mentioned before, we see Horus and Seth position their hands in a way that makes a pyramid over the head of Osiris. Here is a cheap trick album cover with the secret Freemasonic symbolism. The group is pictured on either side symbolizing the duality of opposites by being dressed in black on one side and white on the other. The guitar is checkered and the three pillars are apparent. Pay special attention to the eagle just like the Federal Reserve Building. Here is a Newsweek cover of Obama illustrated with a tracing board. The new global elite indeed. It's all the same design. Once again, Michael Jackson was nothing more than a puppet. The significance of this imagery goes extremely deep with esoteric meaning. The man in the foreground with a ringleader on his head is Aleister Crowley and is well known for being at the forefront of the modern occult movement. An author of many books on the occult Aleister Crowley found esoteric knowledge in combining Freemasonic Kabbalah with witchcraft. He was self-proclaimed the evilest man in the world. Some people believe he was an agent for the British Secret Service. Here is Mr. Crowley with both arms erected upright to represent Boaz and Jachin. The emblem on his hat is a pyramid and has an outline of a hexagon representing the tetrahedron. The duality of opposites combining ascending to the third eye chakra. Note the pentagram on the cover of the book. The picture on the left he is shown holding a statue of Caduceus. It is all the same image, the hermetic duality of opposites. The emerald tablet offers hermetic knowledge that was favored by alchemists through the 14th, 15th, and 16th century. The esoteric meaning of the emerald tablets has been incorporated into the tarot. Here we see Crowley and Freemasonic regalia. The emerald tablet, along with the theories of Kabbalah and Freemasonry, hold a common thread to the practitioner. These teachings are the basis for practices like Wicca and tarot. The Thoth tarot deck was developed by Crowley and illustrated by Lady Frida Harris, and is probably the most recognized deck in existence. The deck was intended to be accompanied with the Book of Thoth. On the right, the High Priestess is sitting at her throne between Boaz and Jachin, with seven pomegranates surrounding her, being a reference to 1 Kings chapter 7. As above, so below is probably the most recognized passage from the Emerald Tablet. Once again, the duality of opposites come into play. The Magician tarot card displays the gesture, as above, so below. This statue was in the rotunda in the Capitol. Washington is displaying the gesture, as above, so below. Baphomet is a pagan deity linked to the Knights Templar and considered to be an icon of Satanism. The Freemasons use the goat as a mascot. The symbolism is apparent. 
Caduceus depicts a phallus. He has wings like the winged sun disk or caduceus and an eternal flame as a crown. Breasts to signify the duality of man and woman, as above, so below. As above, so below is a reference to the emerald tablet. Here we see Lady Gaga displaying as above, so below. She has her left eye closed and the eye of Ra in the palm of her hand. Much like the all-seeing eye with celebrities, it's part of the secret code of the media elite. This statue of Baphomet is being considered for the Oklahoma State House. The secret societies creatively incorporate their symbolism into our everyday fabric. Wonder Woman has her hands crossed to display caduceus. The eagle represents the phoenix or the winged sun disk. The star on her wrist represents the duality of opposites and the crown represents the ascension to the eastern star Sirius. The harlot of Babylon finds her way to Starbucks logo. Notice the two stars on either side and her three-pronged crown with the eastern star Sirius. The deity is a repeated theme, the sun and the moon and a three-pronged crown. Notice that the sun and moon are upside down and it is accompanied with a skull. The star on the forehead are all references to Baphomet. The Statue of Liberty is another monument steeped with Freemasonic references, patterned after the Colossus of Rhodes with the Torch of Illumination. The Colossus of Rhodes was one of the seven wonders of the world, as was the Hanging Baskets of Babylon by Queen Semiramis. Statues are erected with esoteric symbolism. Lincoln is fashioned after the Emperor of the Tarot. He sits between Boaz and Jochen. Inside the capital, with the twin pillars of Boaz and Jochen. Twin monuments are built all over the world as a reference to Boaz and Jochen or a gateway threshold. Malaysia has twin towers that depict Boaz and Jochen. The world elite erect buildings and monuments as a symbol of power. This building has triangular twin towers representing the duality of up and down of the tetrahedron or the star David along with the apex pyramid and the all-seeing eye. Could the World Trade Center Twin Towers have more meaning than what we are led to believe? The symbolic duality of magnetic north and south is apparent with the Twin Towers. Are there ritualistic attributes to the towers? Could the Twin Towers represent Boaz and Jochen as they were referred to at its dedication, and if so, is there a third pillar of ascension to the eastern star Sirius? The spherical caryatid might be the key. A caryatid is a sculpted female figure serving as an architectural support taking the place of a column or a pillar. The spherical caryatid might hold the esoteric meaning to the World Trade Center complex. Located east, and evenly spaced between the north and south towers, the spherical caryatid, as its name applies, is the missing third pillar. Once again, we will reflect upon the compass rows of the first degree tracing board, north and south pillars, and the all-seeing eye due east. The controversy lingers on. With the smallest amount of one's own personal research, it is evident that the official story is not accurate. Is it possible that the Zionists used 9-11 as a ritual of Freemasonic Kabbalah? Was it an inside job? Suspicious on paper, the week before the attack, put options went up a striking 2,000% with United Airlines. There were many things in the media prior to 9-11 that might have indicated prior knowledge. For example, in the movie The Matrix, Neo's ID expires on 9-11-2001. A popular image from an episode of The Simpsons, the character Bart holds up money to a magazine cover depicting a metaphoric icon of the event. The Coup, an East Bay hip-hop group, was set to release their album Party Music in early September of 2001, but was delayed until November 
because the artwork that was completed in June of that year proved to be too controversial. In July of 2001, Alex Jones, a popular alternative media personality, predicted a terrorist attack to be performed by our government as a false flag operation to be blamed by bin Laden. The release of the Illuminati card game in 1995 might give you chills when you realize the illustration was made six years prior to the attack. The image is absolutely shocking. Controversy surrounds the events of 9-11. Many architects and engineers dispute the official report. The truthers, a group of people that want an unbiased investigation, want specific answers to the contradictions in the 9-11 Commission report, while debunkers, a group of people that defend the official story, attack anybody that seeks truthful answers to the event. Squib, a term used to describe external explosions in controlled demolition, seems apparent with the Twin Towers. The explanation given for this phenomenon is air pockets being forced out from the pancaking floors. I agree with Richard Gage of Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth that this is pulverized building material. If this was air from pancaking floors, the air would not be spread out 20 to 30 floors apart. Smoke emitting from these exit points indicates explosives. Do pancaking floors topple? Would the off-center top of the building defy Newton's third law of physics? As it topples, would it fall into the path of most resistance at near free fall speed as if there was nothing hindering its descent? High-grade military nanothermite found at various locations indicate strong evidence of controlled demolition. Multiple witness accounts by emergency personnel along with film footage of molten metal debris piles. The debris piles suspiciously burn for nearly two months. Jet fuel or kerosene burns between 1500 and 1800 degrees. Steel melts at 2600 degrees. At 520 p.m. on September 11, 2001, a 47-story building collapsed into its own footprint at near freefall speed. The Solomon Building, also known as World Trade Center No. 7, was the third building to have absolute complete structural failure from office fires as a result of falling debris from the Twin Towers. No airplane crashed into this building and it was completely omitted from the 9-11 Commission report. In any city, a 47-story building would appear to be mammoth, a little bit less than half the height of the Twin Towers. World Trade Center No. 7 fell at near free fall speed without encroaching adjacent buildings. No scientific hypothesis of occurrence was used to explain how normal office fires could allow the simultaneous failure of all columns to give way at the same time. Some 20 odd minutes before the collapse of World Trade No. 7, the BBC reported that the building had collapsed. No steel frame building had ever collapsed due to fire. To report the collapse of this building before its destruction is proof of prior knowledge. Once again, the release of the Illuminati card game in 1995 might give you chills when you realize this illustration was made six years prior to the attack. There is no proof of any plane crashing into the Pentagon, period. No fuselage, no seats, no luggage, no identifiable bodies. There are only a few pictures of parts that could be picked up by hand. The structure did not collapse for 45 minutes after impact. People simply cannot wrap their mind around the evidence of a pre-planned event compared to what has been told in the media. Where's the plane? Where are the bodies? The coroner left the crash site 20 minutes after his arrival. Dick Cheney ordered Donald Rumsfeld to give up control of the North America Aerospace Defense Command, NORAD for short, in a memorandum dated June 1, 2001, by Admiral Fry, Director of the Joint Chief of Staff. This gave control to the military agency to a president or a vice president for the first time in its existence dating back to 1957. Just so happens the CIA was running drills of planes flying into the World Trade Center on the morning of 9-11 and two months prior. 
During the attack, air traffic controllers thought it to be a simulation. Dick Cheney ordered the stand-down of NORAD. Cognitive dissonance is a psychological condition that occurs when two thoughts conflict with one another. For instance, a smoker will still smoke even though they know it's dangerous to one's health. Critical thinking, reasoning, and plain common sense needs to be exercised. Do your own investigations from independent sources. Learn as much as possible from all perspectives. The esoteric imagery is downright creepy. The spherical caryatid shares the same placement between the twin pillars as the upside-down globe in the tracing board representing the root chakra. The spherical caryatid as the root chakra represents the missing third pillar. The destruction of the twin towers allowed the ascension of the third pillar. The One World Tower is an aniprism obelisk to represent Pi, or Solomon's Temple. The Illuminati uses statues, geoscapes, and buildings as icons of their power. The One World Tower is the same shape as the Transamerica building in San Francisco and holds the same esoteric meaning. The buildings are a reference to the second book of Chronicles, the value of Pi and Solomon's Temple. All the esoteric hallmarks of the Illuminati are here. The events of the World Trade Center pay special tribute to the ancient Babylonian mystery religion of Freemasonic Kabbalah. Don't confuse Zionism with the Jewish people or Judaism as a religion. Zionism is a political movement that was incubated out of Europe by Theodore Herzl and was nurtured by the Rothschild dynasty via the Balfour Declaration. In the United States, capitalism has become an oligarchy. Our government has been hijacked by corporate interests that position for tax breaks and legal loopholes, leaving entrepreneurs with more tax, fees, licenses, and permits making it almost impossible to do business. All major media companies are controlled by one of the six major corporations that provide Americans with a focused agenda of information courtesy of the Rockefeller-sponsored Council of Foreign Relations. Most all news outlets have the same Zionist agenda. In 1996, the Telecommunications Act was signed by Bill Clinton, allowing media cross-ownership and a monopoly by those six major corporations in control of 90% of American media. Many Jews oppose the Zionist political movement. Zionist corporations have taken over the world. They are the new mob. The local casinos might be a good example of how Zionists are brilliant to use loopholes of Native American sovereign land for their own benefit. Ironically, smoking laws and table gambling restrictions do not apply to the tribal casinos. They hide behind the cloak of the tribes to cast an unfair advantage for the rest of us. Las Vegas is a good example of the new order of the sophisticated criminal. Out goes the mafia and in comes the Zionist corporations. They call them secret societies because you're not supposed to know about them. Shadow government is a term that we're all familiar with. The Illuminati is a popular term now. The New World Order. Funny how we automatically attach the word theory after the word conspiracy, and it stands a better chance of being dismissed than conspiracy fact. A dismissive attitude is the exact opposite of an open mind. It really is true. The more you learn, the less you know. I hope that you take the initiative to do your own research, find out what's really going on in the world, uh, take a stand, be, a, be somebody that's important in your community. For God's sake, turn off your TV and, uh, and do the very best you can being a, a patriot and being a true American. I wish you all the peace in the world. Thank you.